So, hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I was speaking to Nas today, and I was sort of having trouble coming up with a topic for our next video, and I said, Nas, what do you want to hear about? And we were talking on What's Up, because he's in Australia and I'm in the United States, and he just says, trust. And I said, okay. That's a huge topic, because there's lots of different facets to trust. There's trust as it relates to business, to friendships, to relationships, romantic relationships, um, familial relationships, father to son, mother to daughter, sister to brother, you to your fellow human being. There's lots and lots and lots of different uh, angles for this. So I think what Nas and I decided to do is do sort of a mini-series on trust. And we're going to pick one facet and talk about it for a few minutes, and then we are going to um, address some of the other ones, just one step at a time. So, the first one that we're going to talk about is trust in relationships, uh, romantic relationships. So, I always like to pull examples from my own life, because I think it makes it a little more authentic for you guys, a little more visceral, a little more real. Um, I've been with my wife now for almost four years. Uh, February 22nd of 2017 will be our fourth anniversary and we'll be together for almost 10 years at that point. So I feel very blessed to have a safe and warm, trusting relationship with a beautiful, intelligent, uh, strong, professional woman. And how did that happen? Well. When I first met her, um, I, you know, didn't deserve her. You guys have heard me say before that I was studying at Vanderbilt, I was doing a PhD. Uh, I had done pretty much everything uh, in my power to become a total a-hole. Um, I, I had got into this program, I thought I was brilliant, I thought I was the man. Um, I was I was burning bridges from my past. Just anything anybody said to me, it wasn't uh, good enough. It wasn't right. I knew better. Uh, you know, it was only going to be a matter of time until I got kicked out of there anyway. I'm, I'm glad I left. They were going to throw me out, and I couldn't stop running my mouth. So, <laughs> how does this relate to trust? Well, my wife, who was then just a girl that I met at a cafe, um... I shared some of this stuff with her because I'm a Spanish speaker and she's a Spanish speaker and we connected on that level. And immediately she started caring about me. So that's the first lesson in romantic trust is to gain trust. You have to give it first. It's kind of like a paradox. If you want to get the trust you have to put yourself out there and go first. At least that's how it was in my experience with my marriage. I know I don't speak for every human being in the human race, but I guess I am the guy in the video, aren't I? So, my wife, uh, I had a, a bill that I had to pay, and it was $3,000, and I don't come from a bunch of millionaires. You know, I went to all these schools on scholarship, or I had to work, or and I was very lucky to get that assistance, and... I was telling her about this bill I had to pay. It was so my car wouldn't get repossessed. And she goes, oh, I can help you with that. Just simply, plain, like that. That's my wife. She just puts it right out there. And I was floored. And the reason that I was floored was because nobody had ever done anything that kind for me in my entire life. My parents are good people. My brothers are good people. They did have done me kindnesses, and I've loved them, and they've loved me, and we've been, you know, big happy family, yada da. But something like this, like a person I had just met, and for a second, I thought she was crazy. But it wasn't anything she did. It was my own stories in the back of my head about, you know, do I deserve love? Do I deserve to trust someone? Do I... You know, am I any good at anything now that I dropped out of this program that was going to be my uh, chosen field of study? I didn't take the money at first. 
And, you know, she's a good salesman. She just kept insisting, 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 insisting. And we had a fight about it. And I was like, dude, like, I said no. Cut the crap. And I said, why the hell are you doing this anyway? And she goes, very simply and gently and plainly, she says, because I love you. And I... It took me an hour, two, three, a week, a month to process that. It was like a, a message from heaven, from space, from Neptune. I don't know. It was like nothing I'd ever heard before because she meant it. People say I love you all the time. But they don't mean it. They're three of the words... In the English language, it's three words anyway. I love you. In Spanish, te quiero. You know, te amo. But in English, it's I love you. Three words. Uh, and people will do anything to hear those three words. Literally anything. You know? Uh, I read a lot of FBI websites. And the FBI websites are riddled with stories of uh, killers who, that's the reason they were out there wasting people is because they just, you know, mom didn't love them enough. Girlfriend didn't love him. Wife jilted him. In order to give, excuse me, in order to get the trust, you have to give the trust. It's a paradox. There's no straight line answer. <laughs> this is coming from a guy who has been with one woman faithfully for 10 years and plans to be faithful until this, you know, meat sack gives up in another 40 years. And I, um, I guess what I would say is if you're struggling in love and struggling in romance, now I have to disclaimer this, this is one man's opinion. There's no absolute truth with this stuff, guys. It just, it's experiential. It's life by life, minute by minute. But I can try to offer something that might help. And if you're struggling um, with finding love, I want you to look inside. And I want you to ask yourself, what am I holding on to? What false belief am I holding on to that's preventing me from accepting love? I was in a place with my wife in my life back then in 2007 where I had a lot of bad things happen to me and I was finally ready to let some love in. You know, our target audience is college students and high school students, so I'm going to say something that's probably going to date me. Um, but have you guys ever heard of the band The Eagles? I don't know, maybe some hands go up out there, a few hands. The Eagles have a song called Desperado. And in Spanish, desperado means desperate. And in Spanish, a desperado is a desperate person. And there's a line of the song Desperado that goes, um, let me think about it for a sec. Um, you've been out riding fences for so long now. You're a hard one. I know that you've got your reasons. These things that, have, that are pleasing you can hurt you somehow. The false beliefs. We think those beliefs help us, preserve us, protect us. They don't. They're hurting you. <laughs> they hurt me. That's why I can say that so bluntly. Because I know. I don't know what your false beliefs are. You do. And that's why this video format for this kind of conversation is so easy. Because, you know, if you don't like what I'm saying, just boop, turn it off. But... If you want to accept a challenge, then sit in a room quietly, put on a candle, you know, put on some incense if you like that, and just think to yourself with nobody around, no social media, no television, nothing, just a little light in a dim room, maybe something nice to breathe in, sitting peacefully, and ask, how am I stopping myself? from accepting the level of caring that I deserve. 
Because no matter what you think, and no matter what place you are in your life, you do deserve it. Every single human being deserves someone to care for and someone to care for them. And in my opinion, it doesn't matter what country of the world you come from. It doesn't matter what your skin looks like. It doesn't matter what God you get down on one knee to pray to or two knees or however it works out to try to fit everybody in there. <laughs> that one was for Nazi. He'll laugh at that. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we be open to receiving the caring that we're capable of giving one another. So that's sort of the first uh, talk on trust. To recap, give the trust to receive it. If you're having trouble receiving it, ask yourself, why? Why? Why, why am I not open to this? And don't be afraid of the answer, because the answer is just part of your eternal truth as a being on this planet. And um, you should tell yourself the truth. It doesn't have to be for anybody else. You don't have to Facebook it or text it to someone or tell your mom and dad or your boss or your friends. or You don't have to tell anybody. Don't, even tell, don't put a comment on this page. Just keep it for yourself. And it'll teach you a lot and you'll learn and grow a lot and things will get better. That's what happened to me. It took eight years. <laughs> but being on the other side of all this, um, I just went upstairs with my wife and I looked at her beautiful, serene, peaceful face as she dozed off to sleep. And I gave her just a little kiss on the forehead and then on her lips. And as her eyes closed like this, this little tiny smile just, and that's worth everything in the world to me. I'd give up this house my job, my car, my credit cards, everything. My greatest wish for you is that you experience the same thing because you deserve it and you're worth it and you're wonderful. So from Boston, have a fantastic evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are, and try to be happy. Thanks.